President Obama made history yesterday with his nomination of Sonia Sotomayor to the U.S. Supreme Court. She's the first Hispanic to be nominated to that position. And joining us this morning to talk about the nomination is University of New Mexico political science professor, Professor Gabriel Sanchez. Good morning, Gabe. How are Good you? Good morning. All I'm right. Doing well. Big deal? How big of a deal is it? It's a pretty big deal. I mean, it wasn't that long ago you had me out here in the morning to talk about the historic nature of the election of right. President Obama, and here we go with the first major nomination he's got a chance to make on the Supreme Court, and is historic, the first Hispanic, you know, on that high court, and I think it is a pretty big deal, not just for Hispanics, but everybody out there, in particular women. Now we've got the second woman that's going to be sitting on this particular court, third of all time, so it's a pretty big deal in terms of the history of the court. And as far as her personal history, at least uh, on, on the bench, the federal court now, uh, she appears to be qualified? Definitely. Um, I think the, the catchphrase you've heard a lot from President Obama and his folks as they laid this out is, you know, she's got probably more experience, you know, at all levels within the judicial system than anybody that has been nominated. 16 years on the federal bench, has been a prosecutor, has worked in a private law firm. That's a lot of experience, particularly for a 54-year-old woman who's done so much already in a, in a pretty strong career. Now, the president said before this election that he wanted someone with a common touch on the bench, and she oh. mentioned yesterday something about her real-world concept consequences of her actions that she understands that and that's a, a, a little bit that that's a positive for some right. and a negative for others what's the negative side of her opinion on that you know that the way that folks look at it is when they particularly conservatives they want somebody who's just going to make decisions based on the interpretation of the law not bringing anything else into the equation not their own personal beliefs not their own personal history and so the real catch-22 here is I think President Obama found exactly what he was looking for somebody who was highly qualified who has this personal life story it's it's played out so well among the population, but also as this new perspective of the court. You know, somebody who was raised in the South Bronx and housing projects, who herself has noted that she plans to utilize some of that personal background to really uh, make sure that the interpretation of the law actually jives with the actual experience of the common person. So it really is uh, kind of where the rubber meets the road here. It's going to be a, a, the particularly conservative issue here. And, and of course, the conservatives say they don't want an activist judge. Right. Is there enough in her background to say maybe she has been that and enough to... Uh, maybe make uh, Republicans uh, jump up and want to stop this nomination. No, the really interesting thing is here, at least from the cases that I've looked at from her opinions, there's not a whole lot there. She hasn't had major decisions on the hot button issues at least, abortion, mm -hmm. those type of issues that you really look for. They're not there. So the interesting thing is I think that reflects the day and age of today. So there's really going to be more excerpts from YouTube speeches that she's made yes, at various some of those points already. in her career, And you're already starting to see those play out. Mm -hmm. So I think a couple of speeches where she's made comments like that um, are really going to be what drives the kind of the controversy around this much more than the case law. There's one case in particular that deals with the firefighters that everybody's heard a little bit about. I think that'll be the case that gets a lot of play and more beyond that is going to be speeches and things she said throughout her career. But ultimately with Democrats having 59 votes right, right. now and her own personal story which is growing up poor New York City, a diabetic. I mean, there's a lot of compelling yeah. history to her that would be hard to vote against. Growing up without a father, it's tough to really challenge her, mm -hmm. especially because she is highly qualified. There's not a whole lot there that you can you can mess with in the politics of things. People forget that when she was originally nominated to the federal bench, it was by a Republican, yeah. uh, President Bush at the time in the early 90s. The first Bush. Right, yeah. so the first Bush. So you've already got that in play. Folks are going to say, wait a minute, I thought this is somebody who is actually, in terms of her decisions, also very moderate. So it's not an extreme liberal. Right. And you've got the Hispanic politics angle where the Republicans have to make a decision. Are they really going to push the first Hispanic, uh, you know, to be nominated to the bench and potentially cost themselves valuable votes down the line? I think this is a very wise move by President Obama and he really well, puts things in a tough position for the it, Republicans. It will be interesting to watch coming up probably in July. Gabriel Definitely. Sanchez, thanks so much. Thank for you. Appreciate being here. Good to see you again.